This video is sponsored by OWC. Earlier this year, Apple came out with its brand new iPhone SE for 2020, which starts at $399 and offers consumers the ability to purchase an iPhone with new internals, but there are a few shortcomings. For the most part, a lot of people were very happy to enter in the Apple ecosystem at such a great price tag, and the iPhone SE is more than enough phone for most people. Now fast forward to today, and Google just released its direct answer to the iPhone SE with the brand new Google Pixel 4a, which is a budget or light version of the current Google Pixel 4 flagship, but at $350 price tag. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at each phone and see what each device has to offer. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. Both of these phones are on the smaller side, which is sometimes refreshing in a world where flagship phones just seem to be getting bigger and bigger. The Pixel 4a is physically larger than the iPhone SE and also carries a larger 5.81 inch OLED panel over the iPhone's 4.7 inch display with those outdated chunky bezels. I'm a huge fan of the edge-to-edge -edge display minus the little small cutout in the top left corner for that front-facing camera over the iPhone's big top and bottom bezels. And the display, spec-wise, is better than Apple's non-full HD LCD panel, at least on paper. But I don't know how to say this or like what it is, but Apple does a better job with these displays despite them not looking so great on the spec sheet. If I look at them side by side, I really can't tell a drastic difference or even a noticeable difference between the two. It's kind of crazy. I'll still give the edge to the Pixel in the panel department, but it's not as big of a gap as you might think. One reason for that big chin on the front of the iPhone SE is to accommodate the home button, something that most people no longer care about, but I've always been a fan of, especially since it houses Touch ID. And although I would much rather have a larger display and Face ID, uh, just so I can get that edge to edge look, uh, there's no other fingerprint sensor out there that I would like over Touch ID. Now, the fingerprint sensor on the Google Pixel 4a, it's on the back, it works really well, but if I had to pick between the two, Touch ID just seems to work much better for me. In terms of build quality, it's not really close. The iPhone is built with much more premium materials. It's all glass on the front and the back with an aluminum frame. The Pixel 4a is made entirely of plastic. It feels cheap, that's because, well, it's made cheap. And if I wanted to, I could probably bend this thing and I don't know if I can break it in half. I don't think I'm strong enough to do that, but you can certainly feel it creaking. And if I really tried hard enough, I probably could do some damage. And I know the iPhone used to have, especially with this design, uh, some bending issues, but over time Apple has definitely fixed that. And it just feels much more premium in the hand in just about every aspect over the Pixel 4a. However, there is one positive to an all plastic body, and that's less of a chance of you shattering your phone on either the front or the back, because, well, there's really not a whole lot of glass, and it's also a lot more scratch resistant. So something to keep in mind. If we move to software and internal specs, I still have to go with the iPhone because although I love the customization of Android and there are lots of preferences and settings that I much prefer over iOS, the SE is rocking the latest A13 chip that's found in the iPhone 11 lineup and iOS is tailor-made to just perform really, really well with this chip. This phone should last you easily a solid three to four years before you even start thinking about upgrading and you're still gonna get probably more updates after that. Now on the Android side, most phones in this price range barely get a year's worth of updates. You're not gonna get a $350 Android phone and probably get the next version of Google or of Android. It's just not gonna happen. The Pixel 4a comes from Google, so you should not have any issues at all in terms of receiving the latest software updates and security patches for at least a few years. Unfortunately, with the 4a, Google went with an older processor and it's kind of noticeable in everyday use. It's just slightly more laggy and lack of smoothness overall, but it's not a huge deal breaker. It is just something to keep in mind. As far as battery goes, the Pixel 4a has a much larger 3140 milliamp hour battery to the iPhone SE's measly 1821. And yeah, the gap is pretty noticeable in battery life. Now, even though the A13 chip and iOS 13 it does a pretty good job of conserving battery and it's not a full HD display. So you, you, would, you would think that the iPhone SE's battery life would be good, but it's just not. 
Uh, the Pixel 4a isn't a world beater in battery life, but it's actually able to compete with some of the higher end flagship devices out there. And so you should definitely get a full day's worth of heavy use. Uh, something I really can't say the same thing about with the iPhone. I forgot to mention this earlier, but I do want to quickly point out that there is only one model of the Pixel 4a, and it comes in at six gigabytes of RAM with 128 gigs of internal storage. The RAM thing isn't really that big of a deal. I know some people get hung up on numbers, uh, but the software and the other, you know, the processor really has a lot to do with performance over the RAM in most cases. And so you probably won't notice a huge difference between the iPhone and the Google Pixel 4a. Uh, but the one thing that is important to note is that you are getting double the storage over the iPhone 64 gigs of base storage for that $399 price tag. So that could be a big deal for some of you out there. Now, aside from software and ecosystem preference, the main two categories that could drive consumers towards one device over the other is going to be the price and the camera. So let's start with the camera. And even though the iPhone SE received a lot of the same internals as the iPhone 11, it didn't get the same camera. The Pixel 4a also did not receive the same camera setup as its Pixel 4 counterpart, but the image quality is very close. This is mostly due to Google's excellent computational photography and image processing. Google is top tier, in my opinion, when it comes to software that works in tandem with its camera hardware. And while Apple has made great strides in this category, I still feel like the crown goes to Google and it's kind of theirs to lose. As you can see in most situation with these images, the iPhone does produce a much more natural and even looking color profile compared to Google's kind of cooler tone, but the images are just much more sharp and clear. Even in poor lighting conditions, the iPhone SE just produces a much more soft image. The iPhone SE also has a portrait mode, but it's only available for people, and so pets or objects cannot take advantage of this camera mode, unlike the Pixel 4a, which again uses the great image processing power to deliver some pretty solid portrait mode photos. Even without portrait mode on, I just think the Pixel 4a is able to take some incredibly sharp photos from a phone at this price point. That's not to say that the SE has a bad camera. That's not the case, but it's just not as good in my opinion, at least with stills. I'm not even gonna show you video examples because unfortunately, the Pixel 4a is not anywhere near the same level as Apple and its 4K 60 frames per second video. You do get 4K video at 30 frames per second on the Pixel 4a, but the stabilization and just overall image quality is for some reason, it's not nearly as good as how it is with stills. So if you're gonna take a lot of videos, maybe don't go with a Pixel 4a. But if you're just, you know, videos here and there, it's gonna be good for most people. Uh, but the stills is where the Pixel 4a really shines. All right, now the price. Both phones are very affordable, which is the whole appeal of each one of these phones. But the Pixel 4a does come in at $350, which is just under the iPhone SE's price tag of $399. And that is for the 64 gigabyte model with the iPhone SE. There are other options, but it does get more expensive. Like I said before, the Pixel 4a only comes in one model with 128 gigs of internal storage and it's $50 cheaper. So you are getting double the storage. So the question on everybody's mind and the question I get all the time that I really don't like answering is which phone should I get? Well, if saving money is the main goal, obviously the cheaper Pixel 4a. If image quality for still photos is your main focus, pick the Pixel 4a. Ecosystem and software, most likely performance over time. The iPhone probably still gets my vote, uh, but if you have any other Apple products at all, it's kind of a no-brainer for me. You just, you should stick with Apple ecosystem. It's just much better. But if you're brand agnostic and don't care, it's really hard for me to make an argument against what you're getting with the Pixel 4a compared to the iPhone SE. But that's it. I would love to know your thoughts on each device in the comments down below. Which one would you pick? Uh, if you're watching this channel, you're most likely leaning towards Apple, but maybe this might have changed your mind. Of course, would love to know down in those comments. And before we end today's video, I do want to give you more information about today's sponsor, OWC. OWC offers a wide range of products for your Mac, like internal hard drives, SSDs, memory, Thunderbolt 3 docks, and much more. Speaking of docks, OWC has started shipping its new Thunderbolt 3 mini dock for those who need those extra ports, but in a much more portable form factor. The Thunderbolt 3 mini offers users two HDMI ports that provide support for two displays at 4K 60Hz without impacting performance. 
There are also two USB-A ports with a single 3.0 and 2.0 option available and an ethernet port. The Thunderbolt 3 dock also has an integrated Thunderbolt 3 cable, so you have one less thing to worry about tossing in your bag when you're on the go. I highly recommend checking these products out and for more information about everything OWC has to offer and this Thunderbolt 3 dock mini, go ahead and click the link in the description down below. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.